So this set of notes, we're going to really look at three different graphs. First, we're going to look at the graph of f of x. Then we're going to look at the graph of f prime of x. And then we're going to look at the graph of f double prime of x. And so we want to make sure that we're thinking each time on each new graph, it is a different starting graph. And we do also really want to go back to that table that we uh, used, that we created uh, a couple days ago, maybe yesterday, that looked like this. So this table where we were kind of making those connections between, you know, hey, what do we know between, you know, from f of x to f double prime of x, what connections can we make? So that's something where we really want to just be thinking about it. So, you know, in the top graph, when we only have f of x, we're going to be looking at that whole top row, right? So f of x being positive, zero or negative tells us nothing. But f increasing will tell us that the f prime graph is greater than zero. f having a critical point will tell us that the f prime graph equals zero. f decreasing will tell us that the f prime graph is less than zero. f being concave up will tell us that the f prime graph is increasing and that the f double prime graph is positive. So we want to be making those those types of connections. So, you know, kind of looking at this first, I'm going to just look at the increasing decreasing parts. I think that's a little bit easier. And then we can move on and look at the the concave up, concave down stuff. So I'm going to first just kind of pick out where are my critical points. So we have critical points at x equals negative four, at x equals negative two, and at x equals one. So those are my three critical points. And so then we can kind of just maybe I'll highlight the increasing parts in yellow. So those increasing sections are in yellow. And we can use like green for our decreasing sections. So this is only going to relate to increasing decreasing. So it's only right now we're only thinking about connections between f and f prime. So, you know, our first connection we can make, we can say that uh, f prime of x will be greater than zero for negative infinity to negative four, union negative two to one, because f of x is increasing. Yeah, and then we can kind of do the same thing with decreasing. f prime of x will be less than zero for negative four to negative two, union one to infinity, because f of x is decreasing. Okay, and then we can do our, our basically our critical points. And all of those are horizontal tangents. So when they're horizontal tangents, remember what we kind of want to remember for critical points is if it's a horizontal tangent for f of x, then f prime will be zero. And if it was one of those uh, basically not differentiables, right, like a corner, a cusp, right, something that more looks like that, um, even a vertical tangent, then f prime of x is undefined. But all three of these were horizontal tangents, so they're going to show that f prime of x equals zero. So we can say f prime of x, we did the greater than zero, we did the less than zero, now we're going to do the equal to zero for x equals negative 4, negative 2, and 1, because f of x has a horizontal tangent at those points. Okay. And then from there, uh, one more thing I guess we could kind of make a conclusion about is this graph turns 1 to three times, and so it's a quartic graph, right? It has degree four. So when we take the derivative, our graph will have degree three. So f of x is a cubic function. Sorry, f prime of x. f prime of x is a cubic function because f of x is quartic. So that's another conclusion that we can make. Right, and then from there, after we've done this, um, really kind of our next few things, uh, I guess, well, maybe we could talk about positive, the maximums and minimums, we could do that. So we have maximums at negative four and one. 
So we could say f prime of x uh, changes from positive to negative at x equals negative 4 and 1 because f of x has a relative max there. And then we could say the opposite, f prime of x will change from negative to positive at x equals negative 2 because f of x has a relative minimum there. Right, so those are our kind of, right, the maximums and our minimums. How do we connect the maximums and the minimums back to f prime of x? Well, that's when f prime of x changes between positive and negative. So that's everything that we kind of can do with our increasing and decreasing sections. So I know, you know, I have a tablet, so this is easier, I can erase this. But if you, if you were doing pencil, you know, it might be good to erase or use another color. But now we're gonna kind of look more into the sections of concavity and make those types of conclusions. So if we look at, it's a little bit hard to, to fully pick out where these, uh, where these change between concave up and concave down. And so really, you know, this graph, I should have done a little bit better of a job of, of making that clear. But if we kind of look at, okay, where is this graph concave down? It's definitely concave down, concave down, concave down. And somewhere in here, it changes to concave up. And I'm just going to assume, it's really bad in math to assume, we want to really be sure. But I'm going to look at that as being x equals negative 3 is where that, that changes. Okay. And then next, we're going to be concave up. right? And so we'll go with you know, kind of concave up, concave up, concave up, concave up. It looks like it changes about here. And this is where I said, you know, we really should have an actual value. I should have told you the actual value of this. Um, we're going to call this, you know, for our notes, negative one half. On an AP exam, they would never make you guess like that. They would, if they wanted to know about that point, they would tell you that it was at negative one half. So they would tell you it changes concavity at negative one half. And then now we're concave down again. So concave down, concave down, concave down. And you can kind of see when these change, uh, it usually is where we get a very kind of straight linear looking line is right here. It really looks like it's linear right there. You know, you're not seeing the curve too much. If you zoom in, you're not really seeing a whole lot of curve. It's looking a lot more straight. That's where you're going to see that change in concavity. But basically what we're saying for, you know, f of x, right? f of x is concave down in the purple sections. And it's concave up in our green section that I, I highlighted. So now this is going to give us two conclusions. This is going to give us a conclusion about f double prime of x. But if we go back to our table, right, if we go back to our table that we created, the concave up and concave down actually tell us about f prime increasing, right? When f was concave up, f prime was increasing. When f was concave down, f prime was decreasing. And when f had that inflection point or that possible inflection point, f prime had a critical point. So that's actually going to give us a few more conclusions, um, you know, to help us out there. So we'll kind of do these together. So, you know, for my conclusions about f double prime of x, we can say that uh, f double prime of x, we'll start with the purple section, so that's concave down. So it's less than zero for negative infinity to negative three union negative one half to infinity because f of x is concave down. Then we can do the opposite. We can say f double prime of x is greater than zero for negative three to negative one half, that green section, because f of x is concave up. And then our third item we can say would be for inflection point, right? So our inflection point is where it changes concavity. Well, both of these did change concavity. So f of x 
uh, now f, uh, you know, basically those are inflection points, but what does that tell us about f double prime of x? It tells us that it changes signs. So f double prime of x changes signs at x equals negative three and x equals negative one half because f of x has inflection points at those points. And the last thing we can kind of say is the we had talked about the, the quartic, right? So f of x is quartic, f prime of x is cubic. So that means f double prime of x will be quadratic, right? Degree of two. So we can say because f prime of x is cubic. We could have also said because f of x was quartic. Either, either way will work. So it goes down one degree each time. Now, what do those items tell us then about f prime? Well, we can make more conclusions about f prime. So we'll say you have the d, the concave down part. We said that meant that f prime of x is decreasing. So f prime of x decreases for negative infinity to negative 3 union negative 1 half to infinity because f of x is concave down. So this, what I want to highlight here is kind of, this was you know, our purple section, right, on the graph, which is that item one. Those are basically saying the same thing. Okay, all three of those are, are really kind of almost like synonyms. When f is concave down, that means that f double prime is negative, and that means that f prime is decreasing. All three of those uh, kind of work together. Okay, and then we can do the opposite for the number two was where it was uh, f pr double prime was positive. We can say that that means f prime of x increases at those spots. So increases for negative three to negative one half because f of x is concave up. Right, all of our justifications have to be with f of x is concave up. Okay, and then um, our next one would be, you know, for f prime to have a relative max and min, we could do that as well. So where, you know, basically, if we look at, you know, uh, negative three is where we're changing from concave down to concave up. So, you know, I kind of x equals negative three. F double prime is going from being less than zero to being greater than zero because we went concave down to concave up. So that means that F prime is going from decreasing to increasing, right? Decreasing to increasing would mean that F prime has a relative min. So it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit funky to think about that. Um, so, you know, I'm gonna kind of put these in a different color because they're not something that I've really ever seen tested, but we could kind of say, you know, that basically F prime of X would have a relative minimum when we change from concave down to concave up. So we'd have a relative minimum at x equals negative three because f of x changes from concave down to concave up. Again, if this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, uh, the green part, don't worry about it too much. I've literally never seen this tested in my life, but it's just something that if we're getting advanced, we'd kind of make that conclusion. And so similarly at negative one half, we'd have a maximum because f of x changes the opposite way. It changes from concave up to concave down. So, you know, those are some conclusions. So make sure you got all those, make sure we understand them. And now we're gonna look at the, the graph of f prime of x. So looking at the graph of f prime of x, right? We wanna make sure that we're changing that we realize that we're starting off with the derivative already. And so one thing that I really like to do is I really like to say, okay, what are my critical points here? They're not the horizontal tangents, they're the zeros. Those are our critical points. And so I like to actually draw out a number line for you know f prime and put in negative two, one, and three. And now my negative and positive is just if it's above or below the axis. So it's below the axis 
above the axis, below the axis, and above the axis, right? We're kind of thinking, you know, below the axis is f prime negative, right? And above the axis would be f prime positive. So that means what is my original graph doing? My original graph is decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. Okay, that's what f is doing. Okay, so conclusions we can make about f pretty pretty instantly is we could say that uh, in this case f of x is decreasing for negative 2, sorry, negative infinity to negative 2. Union 1 to 3 because f prime of x is less than zero. We would normally add four of those intervals, but I'm not gonna, you know, this is gonna get too long. So similarly, f of x increases for negative two to one, union three to infinity, because f prime of x was greater than zero. Okay, so we have those two things. And then we can talk about critical points, but I'm gonna actually classify my critical points. So, um, oops, this is number, one, number two. So number three, we could have a separate one for, you know, basically like saying x equals negative two, one, and three are critical points. That that could be like our number three, right? Because f prime of x equals zero. That would be a, a good thing to put. But I'm going to just go ahead and classify them. Um, so I'm going to say that x equals negative two and three are minimums, relative minimums, like f of x has relative minimums there, I guess, um, because f prime of x changes from negative to positive. And then similar, similarly, x equals one for f of x, is a relative max and then the opposite because f prime of x changes from positive to negative so that's pretty much everything that we can do with increasing decreasing positive you know relative max min uh, the other thing we can talk about is so this was a cubic function right as one two turns it's a cubic function so going up one right because it would go up one degree for f of x so f of x would have to be quartic degree four right because if you take the derivative of degree four that'll get us to three which is f prime so f of x is a quartic function because f prime was cubic so that's pretty much everything that we can draw from you know the positive negative section the, about the increasing and decreasing Next, we're going to want to think about the concavity, right? So I'm going to go ahead and again, kind of erase this. And so concavity depends on F prime increasing, right? You know, we look at that table and basically when F prime is increasing, we know that F is concave up, which would also mean that F double prime is greater than zero. When F prime is decreasing, we know that F is concave down and so we know that f double prime is less than zero. So that those are the relationships we wanna look at next are the concavity relationships. And so we're gonna do, you know, find where f is increasing, f prime is increasing and decreasing just based on, you know. So if we, you know, highlight it again, where is f prime increasing? f prime is increasing where it's literally going up. And then where is f prime decreasing? It's decreasing where it's going down. So in this case, we can say that, you know, for the f double prime of x, right, that's the concave up section, the increasing section, we can say f double prime of x is greater than zero for negative infinity to negative one union two to infinity, right? because, and then our because would be because f prime of x is increasing. Then we do the same thing for our green section. 
f double prime of x is less than zero for negative one to two because f prime of x was decreasing. And then the inflection points is just where f double prime changes signs. We don't care which way it changes signs, they just change signs. So if double prime of x changes signs, that means that we have an inflection point at x equals negative one and x equals two because f prime of x, uh, basically we could say because f prime of x has relative extrema, right? It has a relative max or relative min. Now you could have also said because f prime of x changes between positive and negative or vice versa, that would have worked as well, right? Basically at those two points, we have a relative max and a relative min for f prime. So that means if we have a relative max or min, it means it did change signs. So either way you word that is fine. And then we start off cubic. So if we take the derivative of cubic, it should go to quadratic again. So f double prime of x is quadratic, right? Degree two, like a parabola, because f prime of x was cubic. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go back and say what from these three can we kind of apply to f of x, right? So when f of x, when f double prime was positive, that means we're concave up. So f of x is concave up for those same intervals from number one, negative infinity to negative one, union two to infinity. Now I can't say because f double prime of x is greater than zero because I don't have that graph. So I have to use the same you know, reason because f prime of x is increasing, right? I want to use the graph that they gave me. They gave me an f prime graph. But these, I drew arrows that way. They can kind of go, you know, anyway, right? So those arrows basically tell me all three things. So then from the second one, right, in blue, that's going to tell me that f of x is concave down when we have our second derivative negative. And we're going to use the same reasoning because f prime of x was is decreasing. Okay, and then the third one, when it changes signs, those are inflection points. So those are inflection points. So eight would be f of x has inflection points. You can just do IPs. At x equals negative one and x equals two because same reasoning is fine f prime of x has relative extrema now if you wanted to say f prime of x changes between increasing and decreasing that would work as well so that would be kind of all the conclusions that we can draw from an f prime graph this is the most common graph okay on the ap exam this is kind of like the most common graph that they're going to ask you to analyze and that's because it forces you to think both ways. It forces you to think kind of taking a derivative, uh, going to f double prime of x, and then kind of working backwards, like an antiderivative going back to f of x. So f double prime of x graph, now this is our third one. And this one actually we can draw the least conclusions about because especially for f of x, because we're working backwards two times. So we actually have no clue where f prime, where f of x would be increasing or decreasing. We can only uh, draw conclusions for f of x about its concavity. So our first thing we want to do is kind of get our basically inflection points or even possible inflection points. So basically, you know, x equals zero would kind of be an inflection point because we change signs. Whereas x equals three is only going to be a possible inflection point. It's not actually going to be an inflection point because we, we didn't change signs. But if you want to, you know, like I did before, we can do a number line with f double prime. We can put in zero and we can put in three. We can say our graph is below the axis, so it's negative, above the axis between zero and three, and above the axis from three to infinity. So we were kind of highlighting these, right? We're above the axis and above the axis. And then we are below the axis. And so with our f double prime graph, right, what that kind of, what we do is we draw that as concave down, concave up, and concave up. 
So our first conclusion that we can kind of draw is we can say that f of x is concave up for 0 to 3, union 3 to infinity, because f double prime of x was greater than 0. Then we do the same thing, but for concave down. So that's going to be from negative infinity to 0. And because f double prime of x is less than 0 or negative. And so now for inflection points, if we remember, we only get inflection points where it changes. So x equals, you know, f of x has an inflection point. at x equals 0 because f double prime of x changes signs. And then the last thing we can talk about is the, the degree. So this is a cubic function, right? Two turns, cubic. So if we went up one, it would be quartic. If we went up two, it would be fifth degree or quintic. So we can either say quintic. I'm going to just use degree five. I think that's easier. So f of x has degree of 5, which, you know, if you wanted to use the word, would be a quintic function, because f double prime of x is cubic, or you could even say degree 3. Okay, and that's actually all we can do. We can't do anything else. And you can kind of see that from our table, right, the table that we drew. If we look at, we're starting this time in our bottom row, right? And in our bottom row, all of, you know, the whole first six boxes were all basically crossed out. So nothing that we know about F double prime can tell us anything about whether F prime is, or whether F is increasing or whether F is decreasing. We only can know about its concavity, okay? So now we'll take these and kind of apply these back to F prime being increasing or decreasing. And so... We'll actually see, we can do a little bit more with f prime actually. So we'll, we'll get there. So we're gonna kinda take those three and what do those three tell us, right? So the, the first rule basically told us that you know f prime of x, right? We, we did this, it's basically this chart, right? You know, when we're using that same idea when f double prime is zero, went backwards to concave up, and now we can say that means f prime is increasing. So f prime of x increases for zero to three, union three to infinity, because f double prime of x is greater than zero, right? Both of our rule ones are saying the same thing. Then our rule twos will be f prime of x is decreasing for negative infinity to zero, because f double prime of x is less than zero. Now, we know we have relative maximums and minimums at our inflection points, but let's actually kind of classify this. So if we went from decreasing at zero to increasing at zero, right? That's what happened like at zero. So at x equals zero, what did f prime do? f prime went from decreasing to increasing, right? From like negative infinity to zero, if we drew like you know, a number line for f prime, right, at zero, it was decreasing, and now it's increasing. So f prime, and really this is f double prime, but f prime is changing from decreasing to increasing. So that means that f prime has a minimum there. And, you know, this one, uh, I'm going to do in another color. I'm going to do this in red, because again, this is something that really is not tested very heavily. Everything so far you absolutely have to know. This is kind of almost like bonus content. So bonus content would be f prime of x would have a relative minimum at x equals zero because f double prime of x changes from negative to positive. Now this will look very much like what we normally do, right? Normally we would write this the exact same way, but with f of x and f prime of x. You're literally just kind of moving it down a step, right? Normally when we do like relative minimums, we would say f of x has a relative minimum at x equals zero because f prime 
change from negative to positive. Well, now we're just using f prime and f double prime. So then at three, what happened? At three, it stayed positive, right? So at three, it stayed positive. So what we could say is, you know, f prime of x, basically it has a critical point at x equals three. Um, so, you know, it has a critical point at x equals three, but it is neither in max or minimum. And that's because we don't change them. So our reasoning there could be because, you know, f double prime of x does not change signs. Uh, x equals three. So that's a little bit, you know, tougher to understand. But like I said, it's that same concept that we've been working on. Now, something that would be super, super advanced, like if you feel like this is already too complicated for you, and you don't want to go anymore, just stop the video, you know, we're done with th this is the end of the notes. But if you want to get super, super advanced, there is actually a third, you know, you could think about a third derivative, right? And I've never, ever, ever seen this test on the AP test. I can almost guarantee you it would not be tested on the AP test. So if you're like, Mr. Ewer, I don't want to get confused, then just, like I said, stop the video. But what we could kind of see is that these guys here, that's, you know, x equals 1 and x equals 3. That's where basically f triple prime of x would be 0. And so kind of connecting from f prime and f triple prime, that would be the same as connecting f and f double prime. So we could kind of say is that basically since, you know, f double prime is increasing here, um, and f double prime is increasing here, you know, from negative infinity to one and from three to infinity, we could say that that would mean that f prime would be concave up. And so that's kind of, you know, I guess this connection between f prime and f double prime like that, but taking it a step further, which is a little bit weird. So if that confuses you, don't even worry about it. But like a super, super, super advanced thing would be to say that f prime would be uh, concave up for negative infinity to negative one union three to infinity because f double prime of x is increasing. And the opposite, we could say f prime of x would be concave down for negative one to three because f double prime of x is decreasing. And so that would mean that both, you know, f prime of x would have inflection points at x equals negative one and three because f double prime of x had relative extrema. So really that is way too complicated. The AP test will never ask that. But if you wanna challenge yourself to kind of think that way, that part in red and that part in purple is kind of challenging to take it a step further. But you know, going back, like I said, if we get rid of that, the, the main thing that we want to think about here, which I think was the easier part, was what we had in, in green and then trans, transferring it to the blue part. So that's just thinking, you know, this, this section over here where we had, uh, let's look for our zeros because it's F double prime. We get our zeros where it's negative. That means we're concave down. F is concave down. And when we're positive, we're concave up. So if that part in green made sense to you, that's all that you really need to know. That's all that you're gonna be tested on in my class and that you'll be tested on the AP exam. Okay, I may throw that purple part in, that red part in as like a bonus question, but you absolutely do not need to know it.